should have towards each other and an attitude that he has towards us so we can understand his attitude towards us. And, of course, you know, you're going to reap what you sow. You sow this attitude, you'll reap this attitude. Now, with that thought in mind, I want you to look. Well, let's look first at Ephesians 2, 7. I think that's where I want to start this morning. Glory. Glory. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So how is he going to display the riches of his grace? Through kindness from him to us. Now, I want to give you the definition of kindness, and we're going to see where all is used in the Bible. Kindness is moral excellence, gentleness, goodness, mercy, good deeds. It's tender hearted. Having strong bonds of confession to be compassionate or tender hearted, to be sympathetic, is the fruit of a tender heart. So that is what tenderness is, and it's the attitude God wants us to have toward each other. Tenderness. Now, if you look at Psalms 118. In Psalms, in 118 and 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, tender, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So, compassion, mercy is an expression of tenderness. The Lord is tender towards us. Now look at 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, in chapter 6, And verse 1, when then as workers together with him, we then as workers together with him, beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in patience, in affliction, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumult, tumult, in labors, in watching and fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. We have the Holy Spirit. 
by kindness by the Holy Ghost. That is how we're to be toward one another in all those situations. Situations don't change how we're supposed to treat one another. Now, I want you to look again at Ephesians. In chapter 2, verse 7, that in the ages to come he may show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness. God wants to show the riches of his grace to people. He does it through his kindness, his gentleness, his his goodness, and his mercy. Now, we are supposed to take that so that he can demonstrate through us the exceeding greatness of his grace. So we're supposed to treat people with tenderness in his name. We're to demonstrate that tenderness so they can see what God is like. Because remember, we are the body of Christ in the earth. The only view people will have of what Christ is like is the church. We don't represent ourselves, we represent him. We are Christ in the earth. And we are to be kind and to display kindness. It's the fruit of a tender heart. And God has a tender heart toward us. So that's what we want to reach out and display in his name. Now look at Second Peter. In Second Peter, in chapter 1, in verse 7, And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, our love. Now let's go back up. I want you to see where he's coming from with this. It's so important. In verse 3, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain in life and godliness, one of those things is tenderness. Through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature. What is his divine nature? Tenderness. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And you know about all these great and precious promises. We've read about them. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. Now, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. To brotherly kindness, charity or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make sure your calling and election is sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Now, if you go back and do those things, he says you will never fail. And he lists them. And every one of them we can understand and do is no big mystery. And one of those 
is brotherly kindness toward each other. And as I say, that means gentleness, goodness, mercy, goodness, and good deeds. Show good deeds to one another. Do good things for people. That's kindness displayed. That's the fruit of a kind heart. What kind of heart do we have? If we want to demonstrate his heart, we have to be kind because that's his heart. Kindness, okay? Now look at Titus. In Titus, as we look, if you get to before I do, hold your finger on it and wait for me. Well, I can't find it this morning. There it is. I knew it was in here. Titus chapter 3 and verse 4. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward men appeared. Not by works of righteousness would you have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So, our salvation is from his act of kindness. And that's what he showed through his death, burial, and resurrection. It was all for us. Look at the kindness he always displayed. You don't display kindness just when things are going good or when somebody does something good for you. You represent Jesus Christ at all times, good, bad, or indifferent. Always show kindness. Remember, one of the words for kindness is good. And he says, be good for your enemies. Even heathen love their friends. Being good to your friends don't prove nothing. Really, everybody does that. Be good to your enemies. Show kindness towards them. Brotherly love towards them. It says pray for your enemies. And for those who would persecute you, pray for them. Show kindness toward them. So there's never a situation or a reason that we don't display kindness or tenderheartedness or compassion or to be compassionate, to be sympathetic. Tenderness is the fruit of a tender heart. And we've been given that. Can't say we don't have it. I'm going to show you. We have tenderness within our spirit. Because we have his spirit in ours, and his spirit is the spirit of tenderness. So this is the attitude we should display toward one another. In good times and in bad. Always do good for those around you. Whoever that is, I remember when the Bible says, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. And the second is likened to it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Show tenderness to your neighbor. Do good to your neighbor. In fact, I researched the word neighbor once, and it literally just means the one closest to you. Whoever's closest to you right now, show tenderness, compassion, goodness. Oh, if we only did that for each other, towards each other, if that was our attitude, it would change everything. Everything. When you leave here today, remember, be tender-hearted. Be compassionate. Display the tenderness of God. 
I don't know why he got me on that word, but I got on it and couldn't get off. Every morning praying, he'd say, tenderness, that's my heart. So if you want to know what the heart of God is, tenderness. Love, tenderness is displayed through love. God loves us. Therefore, he's tender-hearted. God's good to his enemies. He says, listen, the rain falls on the good and the bad. Sun shines on the good and the bad. Look at the tenderness he showed the men who beat him and scourged him and hung him on a cross. You can't say, well, Lord, I couldn't do it because of what they did to me. I, I shouldn't have to do that. He looked down on that cross and said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. That was his tender heart. He was still tender hearted towards those men who crucified him. He was showing compassion for them. Now, that don't mean you have to go hang out with bad people. But when you're around them, you've got to show tenderness. I, I really believe if, he, if he'd have come down off that cross, he didn't want God to forgive him for what they tried, but he wouldn't have went and hung out with them. Because he said, don't be seen with people like that. Now, in Corinthians, it says, to remove yourself from these kind of people. But then he goes back and corrects himself. He says, wait, wait, wait. Don't remove yourself entirely. Because then how are you going to affect them? See, that's tenderness talking again. Not entirely. His whole heart was tender towards people. <clears throat> that's what he was about. He was always acting according to his tenderness. And that's what we must learn to display between one another and even our enemies. You know, you don't have to be mean to let an enemy know you're mean and to stop them. I tell you, listen, a whisper is as powerful as a scream or more powerful sometimes. It ain't how loud, it's how intense. You can say, shut up! Or you can say, shut up. Which one's more intense? Which one would you more, be more afraid of? So you can show tenderness quietly. Just be quietly tender. You can do it in a whisper. Hi. What can I do for you today? Don't you know God loves you? And I do too. Jesus died for you. Didn't have to scream a time. No, because words have meanings. And I don't care how loud or how soft you say them. The meaning is still there. So we can talk in tender tones. And be just as effective and just as powerful. Now look at First Samuel. In First Samuel, Chapter 20. And let's read it. Verse 14. And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not, but also that thou shalt not cut off the kindness from my house forever. 
No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemy. But look at verse 15. Thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. So when should you quit being kind? Never. Always be kind. It has its, listen, remember this. God has never asked us to do anything that is not good for us. He's not asking us to be slaves. He's asking us to be children, his children. And he wants us to prosper in all ways. And kindness is one of those ways. He's asking you to be kind because it has rewards. And he wants you to get those rewards. Remember, in order to come to God, you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then the Bible says, he that is diligent will stand before kings. If you're not diligent, you're not going to stand before a king in his favor. So be diligent about showing kindness. Change the whole world. Can you imagine today what it'd be like if everybody, everybody on earth, for the rest of the day showed kindness towards each other? My Lord, everything would change. But dark, everybody would be wondering, why was I ever like that other way? Remember, you're going to reap what you sow. If you want anger, sow anger. If you want love, sow love. If you want kindness, show show kindness. That's why when I was teaching on how to rear your children, you never punish your child in anger. Because they're going to pick up on that spirit. And all you're going to do is instill anger in them. They'll respond to that spirit of anger and go out and be angry. No, you punish a child in love. You do it because you love them, not because you're angry with them. Because you want them to live right, do right, so they'll receive right. But too many times, see, we're not used to responding in love. We're used to responding in anger. In fact, if you should, if you're angry with your child and you're going to discipline them, wait until your anger is gone, then do it. But then most of the time, if you wait until your anger is gone, you have no motivation to do it. You'll just drop it. Because you're not, so you're not doing it for their good. You're doing it just to get rid of your anger. <laughs> sit down and shut up. Instead of saying, Shh, sit down, be quiet. We, 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 we have not really been trained or trained ourselves in how to do things in love. We respond, we respond in all these human flesh emotions. Anger. Bitterness. Hatred, guilt. But we don't know how to respond just in love. Because love, we don't know how to let love motivate us to respond. And we got to learn. And one of the ways love responds is through kindness. So next time you're not being kind towards someone, know this. You're not being loving towards them either. And you're not acting like God because God is love. God is kind. So respond in kindness. And you'll be responding the way Jesus would respond. I pray every morning, Lord, make me more like Jesus every day. Because that's the ultimate goal, is to be like Jesus. And he was not afraid to say 
that he of himself could do nothing. Instead of running around acting big so people won't challenge you. Because inside you're just a little squirt scared to death. Well, I'll tell you what, if you do that to me, I'll butt that mother face. No, you wouldn't. You coward. You run like a scared dog. Because the guy going to hit you in the face, he ain't going to tell you before he does it. He just going to whoop, and that's it. I saw my granddaddy do that one time, scared me to death for that moment. We, uh, we live out in the country. We had a front porch, and on Sunday, all the men folks, women folk be in the house, men folks sat out on the porch and talk and what are they doing, what they're going to do, and when they're going fishing or hunting or whatever. And there was a guy from Griffin, Georgia, about 25, 30 miles north of Thompson, named Pee Wee Goud. Pee Wee Goud looked like this. This dude was something else. And Pee Wee Goud liked my mama. But my mama didn't like Pee Wee Goud. And, of course, the family always teased her about it. Well, Pee Wee's coming. And there's nothing Pee Wee about Pee Wee. (laughs) So Pee Wee comes. Mama's in the house. And my mom was married. She wasn't on best with no other man. But Pee Wee didn't care. And uh, so Pee Wee uh, was talking to Mama in the house. Minna Lee. Come out here, I need to talk to you. Mama didn't say a word. Wasn't going to. Millie Lee, come out here, I want to talk to you. Didn't come out. Millie Lee, you better get your rear end out here. And Papa looks up. And Papa says, Pee Wee Gout, we don't talk like that in front of women folk in this house. And then Pee Wee said, but like a normal guy. And as far as he got, and his head sounded like a water about Papa just went, whoop, that was it. <laughs> now, our house was on a slant, and it had a hedgerow here. One lick, and he knocked Pee Wee Gout over that hedgerow, down in the yard, unconscious. He never moved. And when he hit Pee Wee Gout, it sounded like thumping a watermelon. Poop. And I said, oh, my God. I don't ever want Papa mad at me. <laughs> so he really didn't show kindness towards Pee Wee Gout. <laughs> so I've seen the other side. But let me tell you something. Most of the time, my Papa was a kind man. He would do anything in the world for you. It's just that one of them rules in his house, you don't cuss in front of the women folk. If you do, you're going to pay the price. And what happened is all them men sitting on that front porch, all them son-in-laws and others, they learned one thing. I ain't never cussing in this house. <laughs> Papa never had a problem with men folk cussing in the house anymore. Once was enough. But my grandmother was the most kind-hearted, tender woman I've ever known in my life. I never heard. Now, in our house on Sundays or sometimes during the week, it was a madhouse. There'd be 25, 30 people in this house, everybody talking at one time. When I start talking when somebody else is talking, somebody say, Monica used to say, baby, he was talking. I'd say, hey, baby, I'm from Thomaston. Everybody talks over everybody else. And somehow we know what was said. (laughs) But uh, my grandmama, I never once saw her angry. I never once heard her raise her voice. Love the Lord. So I used to say, if my grandmama ain't in heaven, ain't nobody there. She got to be there. And today, Monica's talking to Mama Starling. They is having a good old time. Tenderness. Oh, if we can only pray to God.
to cause our tender heart to rise up in us. Can you imagine how comforting and fun it would be just to be tender-hearted all the time? Just to be kind all the time. What are you going to do today? I'm going to be kind. Regardless of circumstance. Because I really believe, I know it is, kindness is a good feeling and a good experience. And it's good for us. Now look at Isaiah chapter 54. Are you getting this? This is the attitude we're to have toward one another. It will change us forever. And it will change the church forever. Look at verse 8. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. <coughs> for as the waters of Noah unto me, as is the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I'll not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountain shall depart, the hills be moved, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. So, I want you to know that the Lord has kindness toward you, kind-hearted toward you. He has goodness toward you. He only wants to be good toward you. He has compassion. He's sympathetic to you because he has tenderness toward you. So when you act in tenderness, you're acting as God would act, as Jesus would act. And that's our goal. You know, the old saying, it was so good, I sort of wish it would come by, they had bracelets made and everything, WWJD. Everybody remember that? Yeah. What would Jesus do? <laughs> yeah. I think we ought to have that hung around our neck. What would Jesus do? Because that's our object. That's our objective. It's to be like him. And you know, they, they got glasses now where it'll put displays over the lens and you can see through it, you know, but you can see what's going on. I think they ought to have that put over the lens. And every time you felt anger, that would flash up. <laughs> what would Jesus do? And then you say, oh, gee. <laughs> what would Jesus do? We read. He would show kindness toward you, toward his enemies. Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. Love your enemies, even publicans or heathen love their friends. And one of the responses of love is kindness. We hear that word a lot, but I'm not sure we really understood it or understand it or make it a goal. It's just, well, you know, he's a pretty kind old fellow. Yeah, no. Kindness. So very, very important. Now, with that thought in mind, look at Galatians chapter 5. Now, God is never going to ask us to do or be something. He don't empower us to be. So he empowers us to do the things that he requires of us so we have no excuse for not doing them. Can't not do them. He empowered us to do it. Now, in Galatians 5... I'm going to look here in the Amplified before I get to King James, if I do. In Galatians chapter 5, if you look at verse 22, 
But the fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes. In other words, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is what the Holy Spirit produces in us. It produces it. All we have to do is let it. We know how to produce it. We have to let it. It's going to do its job. But the fruit or the product of the Holy Spirit at work, which is presence within us accomplished, is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, countenance. Against such things there's no law that can bring a charge. And every one of those words also means kindness. He just described kindness. So the Holy Spirit is at work within us to produce a character of kindness in us. All we have to do is act on it, and it will happen. And I'm telling you, if you, if you think about the Lord, keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. Next time you get in a difficult situation where normally you'd get angry or scared or disappointed, think about Jesus and think about kindness. <coughs> kindness. And it'll shut an angry person up. You can't be mad at somebody who's kind to you. And when you do get mad at it, it's because you know if they're kind to you, you can't be angry, and you want to be angry. <laughs> and you know this ain't going to work. So if you want to shut a villain up, be kind. If you want to shut your enemy up, be kind. And how more kindness can you display than to pray for someone? I've heard people say over and over, and I've experienced it. You can't be angry at somebody you're praying for. Sooner or later, your anger is going to leave. So if you're angry with somebody and you feel you have a problem showing kindness, start praying for them. Start praying for them. It'll change your heart. Because why would you want to pray good things in a person's life that you don't like? It won't work. You start liking them. So remember this when we leave here today. Our attitude towards one another and everybody around us. Be kind. Be kind-hearted. Show goodness. Do good things for them. Be compassionate. And your life will change. Because if you sow it, you'll reap it. Amen. Did you hear this this morning? Amen. It's okay? Praise the Lord.